Have you ever wondered how to create amazing animations like this one in Figma? Jennifer Yu Nelson, director and storyboard artist for films like Kung Fu Panda, what? said, A lot of the time in animation is spent getting the story right, and that's something you cannot rush. Now, if you haven't seen me before, my name is Tim, and today I will show you how I, and animators like Jennifer, use storyboarding to create these amazing animations. I will also show you what kind of features I use in Figma to create advanced animations. And last but not least, of course, you will know how to create this amazing animation. Let's waste no more time and get straight into it. All right, so we're in Figma. The very, very first step when it comes to animation is storyboarding. Because this is the way for us to map out what the animation actually will look like. So what will our flow be? We take that idea we have or the reference or whatever we have. We might have seen an animation we want to create. We take it and we break it down into different frames or different storyboards. So here you can see the animation that you saw in the beginning of the clip broken down into different boards or different frames like this. And these are all the frames that the story contains. So on hover, we're going to go to this frame. When we click this, we're going to go to this frame. When we click on either one of these links, we're going to go to a different image and we're going to get a different active link. So if we click Monroe's Palace, we go to this one. If we click Massimo Tower 2, we go to this one. So starting out by just making your frames, creating your storyboard is essential because otherwise you're going to be in the blind when trying to create these animations. So get your storyboarding going. Number one, the second thing we need to do is if we look at our animation. So if we go back to this animation that I've created and we look at the different interactions we have, we have this one on hover where we just kind of move the position of the text, we get this arrow into the image, we increase the size of this image and change the color of it. If we click into it, these appear from the bottom. And if we change items here, you can see that we change the images here as well. Now, one thing here though, that is different about these link items is that we have both a hover state and an active state, which means that we have multi interactions. Now, what the implications of this is, if you want to have both a hover state and an active state or two different states for something, you would before in Figma have to create frames for both of these states. So we would have to have a state for when it's hovered. So Massimo Tower 2 here, whenever it's hovered and when it's clicked, which means that we get a whole spaghetti dish of frames if we do it that way. Instead, we can create components out of it. So if we take this one, grab it and put it into a frame, I'll call it link item. This is going to be the active state. Then we're going to have the regular state. And here I'm going to do something that is quite handy for all of these animations. Um, for all of these different interactions when it comes to masking is the clip content checkbox here. If we click that, we do the same here. And we say that this is going to be the regular or default state. Then I can move this outside of the frame and it's no longer seen because we're clipping the content. And then I can duplicate it again and I can add the hover state here. When that's done, I can go up here and create a component set. And then I just go to each of these items. I rename them. This is going to be active. This is going to be default. And this is going to be hovered. Sorry, hovered. And we're going to call this state. And now we have this component that is going to help us in making our animation a bit cleaner, reducing the amount of frames. 
I increase the width here so that the text doesn't get cut off. Now I'll bring this down here to the next step, which is to start animating. So we start from the beginning. We're going to be naming our layers properly to make it easier when things get messy, because if you have long chains of animations, a big storyboard, and you don't have proper naming, it's going to be, it's going to be a mess. So naming layers properly, we're going to be adding and removing elements as we go. And we're going to try different settings in the smart animate setting window for the actual feel of the animation. So we're going to use something called custom Bezier, which is a way for us to create cooler interactions for our animations or cooler, just cooler animations, I guess. You'll see. So let's go up here. Let's grab our first frame and go into it and look at what we have. So we have this work text. We have this arrow here that is hidden because it's outside of the frame currently. We have the image and its container. Now, remember the first thing we talked about, which is to rename stuff. So I'm going to call this image container, and this is going to be space image. So this image container currently clips the image, just like we did with the link. You're going to see why in a bit. Then if we duplicate this and we look at the top here, we want this text to move. We want the arrow to come into the frame. We want this image to increase in size and we want it to change color. So that's what I'll do. So I'll move this. I'll move this into the frame the arrow as well. And maybe something like this. I'll increase the size of the space image, center it, maybe something like that. Then I'll go to the image in the right side panel, click blend mode and luminosity. Okay. So I think that's what we need for this state. Let's go to the first frame, click prototype. Let's add a flow starting point. I'll call it a new flow and on hover on this image, I click it. I drag that interaction to the next frame, say while hovering, it's going to navigate to this frame and it's going to be a smart animate animation. So you can change these things inside of this will drop down here. So I change to smart animate and I'm going to do a custom Bezier. Like I said, Bezier, Bezier, not sure how you pronounce it. So here we can change the timing. How long is the animation going to be? But we can also change the handles here to kind of manipulate what the animation will look like. Whenever you drag the handle here beneath the baseline, you're going to have a bit of a bounce. It's going to bounce in the beginning. Whenever you drag it outside or above the top line, the same thing bounce in the end. And whenever the path is straight like this, it's going to accelerate faster when it's more smooth, like a uphill battle here, you're going to have a more smooth ascend. And here it's a smooth descend as well. So let's just drag those handles to something like this, the typical S curve. And this is the ease in, ease out. So it's easing in, easing out. If I click play on my flow, you can see that it kind of eases in and then eases out. Shoop, shoop. Hmm. Hmm. Now maybe we want to make it a bit bouncy in the end to make it fun. Maybe increase the timing or the time. That looks a bit more fun, right? And you can spend all day just doing uh, like the smart animate settings. So I'm going to leave that to you. So just go with trial and error as your guiding principle for this. So the next thing is when we click this, we're going to go to this state. So let's grab this whole frame and let's see what we can do here. I'll have this here as a reference. I'll duplicate this frame again. 
I'll remove these because we're not using them. So these are removed. Then this image is going to change its position and it's going to increase in size, right? So right now we have an image in the background on the image container here. That's what you're seeing here in the background. So let's remove that because we don't need it. And this will place so that it covers the full frame. Okay, then what else? We have a back button. I'll just copy that, paste it in, map it to the top. And then we have these items, right? In this one, they are not components, but remember, we created components for these. So I'll grab my component, drag it in here. I'll duplicate it and I'll change the states here, default, and we'll change the names as well. So I'll just copy this text, paste it in, copy, paste. And what we didn't do for this component yet was we didn't add an interaction. That's a key part of these components. So when we hover this default state, go to prototype, when we hover, it's going to go to this one. So while hovering, it's going to smart animate onto this one. And maybe it goes a bit quicker than 600. So let's actually add a click interaction for this one so that we can try out the hover animation. So click, and this should be a longer animation. Go to the Okay, and we click. Now, okay, we have a hover state. Cool. So that works. All right, so what happens next? When we click Massimo Tower, we're going to change the image. When we click Monroe's Palace, we're going to change the image again. Okay, so I'll duplicate this again. And we'll add some click interactions. So when we click Massimo Tower, it's going to go to this frame. So on click, we have the same smart animate animation here. And something else happens, right? We have this image changing. Now, if we look at the original animation, we can see that when we click it, kind of scrolls up like that. So these images are stacked on top of each other. And when it comes to animations or interactions like that, I usually like to use auto layout. So I'll actually just grab this image and I'll grab this one, grab this one, take them all place them here and I'll add an auto layout to this, set it to be vertical, center it something like this, oh, something like this maybe. I'll call this image stack and I will first of all remove that one and I will replace, first of all I'll also drag this down a bit, I will replace this image, so remove that one, with this image stack. So here we go, align it to the top. So now it's kind of the same thing, but now we can scroll through the images like that. So I'll take that image stack, go into this one, remove that image, place it here as well, but this one is going to be for Massimo Tower. So I'm going to change the position so that Massimo Tower is in the top. And it's a bit too short, so I'll just increase the size a bit. I'll change this to be state active and this will be default. Okay, let's see if we Yes, we already have the click interaction. Click. 
and it works. That's nice. We go back, we duplicate the frame again, and I'll drag this one so that we have the bottom image in the top. Now this is also a bit short, so I'll just increase the size a bit. Change the link to be active for Monroe's Palace, and this should be default. And if we click Monroe's Palace, add a prototype on click, it goes to that frame. And that works as well. So now all we have to really do here is add the rest of the links. So click, it goes to Monroe's Palace, Monroe's Palace, space, goes back to space, space, goes back to space, Massimo to Massimo. So now we should be able to go between all of these. Yep. Just making sure that, no, I'm not on the new flow. This is an issue. So we've been looking at my previous prototype. Now let's see if it works as we're expecting with the new prototype. So the hover state works. A bit of a janky animation maybe. So this is where the tweaking comes in. Okay, that works. The image increases in size and did these, no, these just appear. So they just kind of fade in. The reason for that is we didn't add them to the previous frame because all your layers that you want to do a smart animation of has to be in the previous frame. So if they are going to come from the bottom, we have to place them in the bottom. So I drag those outside of the frame like that. I'll replay the animation. Now they come from the bottom. Maybe a bit too quick. So we could change the click animation here to be a bit longer and maybe it shouldn't be as bouncy. That looks good, I think. But the back button just appears as well. So we have to do the same treatment here. Copy it, paste it, and then drag it outside of the frame. Now if we replay it, it comes from the left, just like that. Okay, cool. So now we need to see if the click, the click interaction works. So the hover works and the click works. Cool. And if we click back, we can, because we haven't yet added the back interaction. So let's add interactions for the back button as well. On click, smart animate back here. Let's see if 800 is gonna look any good. Let's go back in here. Yeah, I think that works, but there's a problem. Shouldn't go back to the hover state. It should go to the default state. So when the card or the image there isn't hovered. So my bad again. Let's move these to the first state. This one as well. Did I move them all? This one. Okay, let's replay. On hover, boom. Hover states on these. Click through, boom, and click back, and it goes back. Now, knowing these techniques, what kinds of animations will you be creating in Figma? Let us know in the comments below. Until the next one, have a great life. We'll talk soon. Ciao.